Reading through the Viking Daily program for the very first day of my cruise, it let out to me. Over the next few days, I confirmed it. Viking Ocean Cruises has three issues and one big deal breaker for most cruisers that I had not fully appreciated on my very first cruise last year. I'm Gary Bembridge. Welcome aboard as I revisit Viking Cruises with fresh eyes. The daily program on the cruise, Seven Night Venice to Athens, was light on activities, especially versus other ocean cruise lines. There was one activity per time slot and none when the excursions were out during the day. And the approach of the daily program, however, felt very familiar. It was just like European river cruises, which is where Viking started before launching into ocean. While most ocean lines make much of offering lots of variety, lots of choice, leaving it up to us as guests to pick and tailor our cruises, Viking don't. They have a slimmed down, tightly curated and enrichment focused program. This meant that as the cruise progressed, it was clear everyone was having pretty much the same or very similar experience as I was, just like when I've been river cruising. A major contributor to this shared and very consistent experience is the excursion included in every port. From what I could see, pretty much everyone went on them, just again as they do on river. Take for example in Dubrovnik, there were over 20 groups going on the same walking tour that very day. On other ocean cruise lines, there are myriads of excursions, with everyone going off doing different things, having different experiences. On Viking, everybody does the same thing. They share the same experiences. Even those people who went out on the small range of added cost excursions usually also did the included tour before or afterwards. We all saw the same sights, learned the same history, and heard the same facts about the ports, and we all spoke about it afterwards. Even when it came to dining, we also shared the same experience. All dining venues are included, including the two specialty restaurants, the Chef's Table, Five Course Tasting Menus, and Manfredi's, which is an Italian. Everyone's able to go to these at least once, and so everybody does, meaning we have another shared and consistent experience on biking. There's another import from River Cruising 2. River Cruising runs very much as an escorted tour would with structure and constant guidance. Viking Ocean also felt to me to be a guided, almost paternalistic experience versus other cruise lines. Let me explain what I mean. They don't work through travel agents. They prefer to work directly with us as passengers, often and preferably by phone. They sell the cruise package with flights and transfers mostly, and so they guide and control much more of our travel and travel experiences. When I arrived in Venice Airport to join the cruise, I'd been sent a sticker to identify me as a guest and luggage tags, so I would be easily spotted coming through security. There was a sea of Viking reps in the airport to guide and assist us, people to spot me coming through, people to check me in, people to whisk away the bags, people to shepherd me to the bus, and so on. The morning announcements from the cruise director was also much more detailed than on any other line that I've been on with explanations about what I needed to do that day and what to expect. Even when I switched on my television in the room, there was often a pop-up message reminding me about something I need to do that day, like a survey to complete or advice around things that I should be taking out in port and so on. When we headed out on excursions, there were definitely more people to guide and direct me onto the right bus, give me tips than on any other line I've been on. On the ship, the crew to passenger ratio feels really high and they were extremely attentive. They go out of their way to help explain and importantly again, guide me through the cruise. Somebody, for example, made a note in their system that I don't drink alcohol and then crew all around the ship were constantly checking if something that had alcohol in that had been cooked was gonna be acceptable. Another example is around the COVID protocols. They were the only cruise line to have their own PCR test laboratory on the ship and they maintained many of those protocols way after countries and other lines had moved on. Again, creating that sense of caring, again, almost paternalistic approach to the way they look after us as guests. Like Viking River Cruises, I found Viking Ocean to be definitely a more guided, a more curated, a more directed cruise experience than any other line. I was given less choice and options, but then I was steered 
and directed throughout my cruise. I didn't have to plan as much, think as much about what to do and when I had to do it, nor worry about what I had to prepare and do because they took control of that. Even for example, they have a checklist at the end of the cruise, line by line, for what you need to do at the end of the cruise. But this led me on to another key difference to other ocean cruises, something that some will love and others will definitely not. Viking talk about being the thinking person's cruise. I came away clearly understanding if I go on a Viking cruise, I go because I do want to learn. I want to understand the history, the culture, the cuisine, and the art of the destination. I found a Viking ocean cruise is a relatively serious cruise overall. First of all, it is an adult cruise, only over 18s can sail. Secondly, while I definitely won't say that a Viking cruise is not about having fun, but the balance of the program and the activities are firmly destination and enrichment based. It's about immersing into the destinations and ensuring that I come away having both experienced and understood them. There's not a lot of high energy or light hearted activities. There's no casino. In the evening, the entertainment often includes an 8 p.m. lecture, for example. We didn't have karaoke, silent discos, crazy game shows, that kind of stuff. There are multiple lectures around one a day from the resident historian and other guest speakers. On our particular cruise, it was an art historian. There was a pianist, a guitarist, and a classical duo playing in the evening in the atrium, the explorer's lounge. There is an extensive art collection and self-guided tours you can do on uh, the app. There's a small Viking museum also, and there's a library. The theater shows were pretty low key. A group of resident singers doing Beatles, ABBA, 1960s American classic songs. So no modern stuff in there, certainly for me. On the television, there is a Viking TV channel with recorded lectures and even more enrichment content and even access to things like TED Talks. There is a later night venue, Torshavn, with live music around about till midnight. There's also the Explorer's Bar. But on my cruise, certainly anyway, I found them to be pretty quiet as I did on my last cruise. The one thing I would say, without a shadow of a doubt, I came away from this cruise having learned more than any other cruise I've been on around the history art and culture of this part of the world I was in. And this is the third time that I've done this route and I learned definitely more than on all the others combined. So if you're very focused on wanting to see and learn about destinations, this is what you'll get on Viking, probably better than any other line that I've been on. However appealing that may be, there was one other thing though that did seem to put people off. The Scandinavian design, decor and feel is polarizing. Viking is a Norwegian owned line and the ships have a very Scandinavian look. Lots of wood, light colors and a light palette. Based on my first trip, when people watched my videos from that trip, they spoke about the ship feeling almost Ikea-like and stark, which I think feels pretty extreme and wrong actually. My partner though, seen the cabin that I was staying in both times, which both times a really nice cabin, he didn't associate it with the premium lines because he missed the darker, richer plushness, I guess that we're all probably more used to on American and UK lines. Now I do agree, it is definitely a different look on Viking and may not be what everyone is used to when they think of luxury premium ships, but I actually like that it has this difference. I found it appealing. It underlines that they do things in an alternative way and after all, it is a Norwegian owned line and that look is not out of place in Scandinavia and definitely in upmarket hotels in that region. By the way, all their 930 passenger ocean ships only have balcony cabins. They have the same layout, the same venues, and the same decor. So which ship you're on is largely irrelevant. There's nothing new to explore on the ship, only the destinations, which again is kind of interesting. The venues on the ships include a theater, cinema, living room with library and bar, two-level explorer's lounge with Mamsen's Cafe, overlooking the bow, the Winter Garden Lounge where you have afternoon tea, Chorshaven late night venue, fitness center and spa, indoor pool with a retracting roof, infinity pool, main dining room, world cafe buffet, a pool grill, two specialty dining restaurants and the kitchen table venue for cooking classes. So there is actually a lot of venues on relatively small ships. The food, by the way, right across the ship is outstanding. I rate the food as extremely high and amazing. However, 
Here we get to the deal breaker for many people. Viking cruisers are not cheap, especially when you compare them to larger ship lines because of course it's a small ship, it's a luxury experience, and actually also has many more inclusions than many other lines, particularly the bigger ship lines. So for example, I found that fares will always start between $300 to at least $500 per person per day for their entry veranda cabin based on the region it varies. But that goes up to $1,200 plus per person per day for one of their fancy explorer suites. There are some inclusions in the fair, like specialty dining and events like the daily afternoon tea, which is fantastic, Wi-Fi, wine with meals, teas and coffees, the excursion in every port, a transfer bus to and from the town if it's not in walking distance, and of course the entertainment. The main extras on Viking will be gratuities, drinks outside of meals or a drinks package if you go for that, and of course any spa uh, or any shopping you do. Viking cruises is though not good value if you're a solo traveler because they do not have solo cabins. And certainly on ocean, there almost always seems to be 100% surcharge. They do do some deals occasionally. I've been asked based on all of this stuff if Viking Ocean is good value. I think it's good value if you want a luxury cruise where you have to make few choices, you want to have most things planned for you, and you want to know that you will though see what you need to see all while being educated, all while having good food and attentive levels of service. You can do the same itinerary on bigger ships for much less, and probably a little bit less even on some other competitive small ship lines too. The value in Viking, I think, comes from wanting that whole experience. The value, by the way, if you're doing calculations of the included excursions, I think is probably between $400 and $700 per person per cruise. So when comparing like-for-like -like itineraries on price, do consider how much those excursions are worth. As a solo traveler, I think it's very hard to justify the cost of Viking. But when traveling as a couple, I think I see Viking as value for me and my partner. If I'm going to an unfamiliar itinerary where I really want to deep dive and learn a lot about that itinerary, and of course where I'm sure I'm going to do those included excursions because that does add a lot to the value. I know though my partner would miss the casino, the higher level, much more contemporary entertainment. So that destination and the desire to really deep dive would be the key factor, I think, for choosing Viking and seeing it as good value. If you're not sure about Viking, but like the idea of a smaller ship line, take a look at this video where I talk about Oceania cruises, starting with one big thing that I really liked about the line. See you over there.